Hello, and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. This is episode number 77. And as you can see, it's a video, not just audio. So we have been gathering Airbnb links from listeners. So if you want to send us your Airbnb, you can email us at shampooandbooze at gmail.com. And when you email us, let us know if you're okay with us showing your listing, showing your location, showing your Airbnb username, all the stuff that you would see on screen if someone was looking at your Airbnb to rent it. If that's okay to show, we will make a video. One of the listings we got was from Tony in St. Louis, and it's awesome. We're it's amazing. Excited. Yes, we're very excited to show you guys. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so Tony has a brand new guest house in St. Louis. The first picture is obviously amazing. Um, I did wanna mention something about the title. So he does say, unique new guest house in the heart of STL, which means St. Louis to people who are familiar with that. But I was thinking if he's in a cool-ish, neighborhood that maybe he should say his neighborhood there instead of STL because if you're looking for an Airbnb in St. Louis you kind of already know you're looking in St. Louis so maybe you want to highlight your neighborhood name. Agreed. So this house, this guest house was uh, designed and built along with a house that they're living in. So it's sort of like a tiny garden house as part of their property, which is just gorgeous and exciting. Um, and we will link to the architects that they used because apparently they're doing a lot of um, community development and design in their area and they've worked on a bunch of cool restaurants too so we thought that would be interesting for folks in that area i also want to say i think he should bring his price up <laughs> now tony did say that they started out with a really low price to just start getting bookings and start getting reviews which i think is a great idea we've done that on all our properties but 40 dollars a night i'm sorry 39 dollars a night <laughs> is really cheap so it looks like right now he has uh, four reviews, all five stars. Time to raise the price for sure. You're ready. You've graduated. Okay, so let's go through the photos. First photo, amazing. I mean, hopefully yeah. you'll take a photo in the spring when there's a little more. It, this is a new build. Right now we're recording this in November, so clearly the ground is just barren. Um, but I think if you get a little more greenage there, that'll be a nice photo. So the other thing, you know, we've said this in other listings before is your uh, information under your picture should have information in it. So this is adorable. It's like, welcome, pointy roof. Um, you should say that this is the entrance. Like I, I, I assume it is, but Again, first time looking at the property, I might not know that. So it could be like, welcome, this is our keyless entry door, you know, and you know, you can park in the back. Even if you reiterate it in other pictures, um, it's helpful to orient someone from the very beginning using uh, your titles. I also wanna say this might not be the best first photo. I do believe this is a cool photo to see on the listing as that little like collage thing if you're looking on a desktop it's obviously different um on mobile or wherever else your ipad whatever but this doesn't really give me a sense of like how cool the space is inside so i would say this might not be the best first photo i still love it i love the building itself i think it's awesome but i don't know if it's the best first photo so this is, you know, this makes sense coming after the second photo where you're kind of like having a story, like here we are entering the building, which I think is fine, but I also don't think it's the best second photo either because we want to see the inside of the space. And it is hard with Airbnb. I find it very difficult to get those first 
it's like you got to get the first four photos to be like, boom, this is the space. Even though you do want to be like, here's the outside, here's the door, here we go, here we go. You know, like it's almost like you have to do that after the first four or five photos, oddly enough. But yeah, the photo itself is adorable. I mean, the color is great, the door is awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, everything design wise of the space and the thing is great. I just think we need to reorder this a little bit. We're coming into the space, which is great. Um, I love the, the yellow color and I love the style. You have a poured concrete floor, which I also love as a flooring. And I mean, we are always saying like, give us as much information as possible. And this is a good example of that. It's like, we see the door, we see that it has a keyless entry. We see that we're coming into a tiny house, right? Like it's not where this isn't, you're not making it look like a giant mansion because it's not. So this is a really helpful picture. It's like upon entrance, this is what you encounter. So I love that. Now this photo is problematic for me. Um, number one, we still haven't seen like a large photo of the space really. That one before was, but we kind of need like a, like I think the first photo for a studio like this needs to be like a, as wide a lens photo as possible. And this photo in general, it's not enough information. Like I feel like it's too cropped and closed in. Like I, I want to see, so you have on your, on your words, uh, have a seat, enjoy a coffee and discuss. But I need like the human size of it where I'm like standing above and like seeing, like obviously I can see your house in your backyard there. So I need a better perspective here. Any, anything that's too cropped like this is, is it's not enough information. I love this picture because we get to see everything essentially that's in the kitchen. Now, again, this is a new build, which means you're still, you know, uh, buying all the things and making it feel cozy. And I get that sense that both your design is very minimalist, which I love. Um, so it doesn't feel cluttered. And also I can tell that you're still kind of building up the arsenal of kitchen appliances and things like that. And so, but this is very sweet. Like I kind of feel like this has the things I need to have a weekend in St. Louis. Right. And there's a couple things that I want to point out. Um, when Tony first sent us the listing, this was like almost blank. So there wasn't, it was literally just like the microwave. Um, so I'm so psyched to see that he put like coffee stuff and like, I'm totally seeing that Ikea pegboard. I know that's from Ikea. I love Ikea. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's a bag of coffee. There's a French press. There's, uh, he says there's an espresso machine. I'm assuming it's that thing right next to the um, microwave. The awesome, like retro looking fridge is awesome. The other thing I want to point out though, is that a uh, water kettle is too small to make it looks too small to make a full French press. It looks smaller than the French press. So for me as like a super coffee drinker, I would have a problem with that. Cause I actually don't want to use the Nespresso machine. Maybe I would, but I want to make a, a French press and that doesn't look like it's enough water. So that might be a little bit of a problem. We are coffee nerds. Yeah, we are. So, you know, I'm going to take notice of that, but love it it's like gorgeous it's cute it's perfect for a studio a little kitchenette now this photo is sort of approaching what i was talking about before where i kind of need that like bigger wider this is great i think this is great to be like here's the entrance there's the bathroom is right there there's a little bench right there the kitchen's over here those lights are awesome i think they're beautiful so I kind of need this like from the other side. And I almost, I have to, see, we have to go through the photos, but I don't know if there's an other side view of this. And I kind of want that. I love, this is so clever. I love this picture because it's like, here's the view and check out this lamp detail. <laughs> I mean, but I, mean, I, I like that, you know, it's like, 
it, I feel the texture of the details that you have, and I have an overview of the space in general. So the chair photo that we saw earlier, that was like the two chairs and the table, people love these little vignettes. You know, we say they're very like Instagram-y, but they don't give us information. Whereas this picture is giving us lots of information about the room, but it also includes a detail. So I think it's, it's a perfect picture. Now, I do want to say this. In one of Tony's emails, I think he was like, we put a bunch of hooks up more hooks than we even thought we needed and whatever. I actually don't see any hooks above that bench and I think there should be a row of hooks on that, on that wall. Um, so I'm thinking that there, you know, you wanna put your jacket up, you wanna put your shoes right there by the front mat and you wanna you want sit down, take your shoes off, whatever, hang your purse up, it needs to go right there. So if anywhere needs a row of hooks, that's where it needs it. Tony, hook it up. Tony, let's get hooked up here. Okay, bathroom. Bathrooms that are small, and I have one in, in our apartment. It, our bathroom is freaking tiny. It's so hard to take pictures of bathrooms. It's so hard. You know, even larger bathrooms, they're hard to take because you're like, here's a thing, 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 you know? You have like 10 pictures then. Yeah, you're like, here's 10 pictures of the bathroom. It's a 360 degree view. <laughs> but um, I think this is fine. I do want, I always say this and people are going to get annoyed, but I want a picture of the toilet with amenities on the back. I want tissues lotion and like room spray or whatever you decide on there you know like essential oil spray or whatever mm -hmm. um just a little coziness in the bathroom also it looks like you have gorgeous tiles on the bathroom and i can't see them on the bathroom floor so i'm like show me those tiles so i would say this even with all of your pictures tony which are because this is a new um, construction, it feels a little bit stark, which means, I mean, that's part of the design decision. Um, and I love that, but it also means you can warm it up with linens. So one thing you could have done with this picture is you could have had like a nice folded towel, like over the shower or something, or, you know, something that kind of, um, softens the space a little like it's it looks immaculately clean i mean obviously like no one stayed here yet and so how can you make it feel a little bit more inviting and lived in i always suggest linens or maybe you see the tiles with like a cozy bath mat or something so okay so we finally get to the bed that's that's the thing about going in order which we kind of like went in order which makes sense, right? You're like, go in order, but people need to see this right away. Like, where am I sleeping? I want to know. Um, again, like Ashley said, it looks a little bit stark because look, I get it. Putting together a whole apartment is tough. So I don't see any artwork. There's not very much color. It looks like there's a red um, dresser right there, which, uh, not a dresser, like a, a wardrobe closet thing. And also, I don't see that in another photo. And that's actually a really important detail where it's like, this is where you can put your stuff. And I'm just seeing like a little tiny sliver of a suggestion of it. So normally we... Uh give feedback to people for having too many photos. And I feel like this is one example where we actually want a few more photos. Right, yes. And um, a little bit more color if you can get it in there. Um, and also right here, this photo is tough. And it, well, I know it's hard, it's super hard to take pictures in small spaces or tight spaces or any kind of rooms are hard to photograph no matter what. Um, even if you have like the best lens, perfect real estate lens, it's hard. I've done it. I'm like, what am I doing here? You know, it takes a few tries. So I feel like part of the bed is cut off, although we do see it in the next photo. This is a lovely photo. Um, I feel like you need artwork above the headboard desperately. Uh, although this is freaking gorgeous. I would love to stay here. Yeah. And again, I think, you know, 
this is an aesthetic that you're going for. So maybe artwork above the bed is, is a, a decision that you made. Um, and I love the minimal, minimalist look. I think that it, there is something very clean and inviting about it, but also it, I think there is the possibility of using color here, whether it's a throw, like a blanket throw or, um, yeah, I, I, artwork, maybe even more greenery, more plants. Since you live on the property, it's a little easier for you to uh, maintain a plant in the space. So those are other ways to make the room a little softer. I think it can be minimal, but not feel cold. Mm -hmm. And the problem with white on white on white, kind of like we say gray on gray on gray, I am all about minimal. I am like super minimal. Um, you'll see it in my spaces. We're probably going to do a little like takedown on one of my spaces just so it's, it's not just you guys, it's me too. Yes. But you know, like this, this could, oh man, I would love to pick out a piece of artwork for above this headboard. Like I would love to do it because I think you can do a minimal kind of modernist, funky hipster thing but it doesn't have to be crazy. You know, it can be really, really subtle, but give the room more warmth. That's what I want. I want it to be warmer and a little more cozier because you have concrete floors, you know, like you have kind of like this new build modernist concrete floors and you're like, St. Louis is going to be cold and like right now. So let's make it a little bit more like homey and cozy and warm. I also, I see that you have, you do have plants in there, but they're like tiny succulents. So again, it's like you could do a bigger planter in there um, that, that has like a kind of cas cascading green in it or something, you know? So again, what Ryan's saying is like how to make it feel not white and wintry. Okay, we have a vignette. What do you think? Unnecessary. Yeah, I don't this think This is so... It. This is so sweet, actually. I was just saying before we started that I think different hosts will be excited about something that they offer in the space, whether it's a view, right? We've seen this a lot. People like love a specific view out a window, you know, so they'll highlight it multiple times or they're excited about an amenity that they're offering. And so they they want to show it off. They're like, ooh, we have an aroma diffuser, you know, and that feels like special. Um, but I think as a guest, it's not as important to me or it doesn't feel as necessary to see a picture of it. And so sometimes when I see that as a guest, I feel like you're it's a stretch. It feels like you're stretching out what you're offering. Um, and so like I went to a place in Vermont recently, which was so beautiful and so sweet. And for some reason they were like obsessed with the idea that they offered pancake mix and maple syrup Yeah, and a waffle. Is great. They had a waffle iron that made little like cow shapes and like farm shapes. And again, like that's adorable, but not only did they have a of it but then they also mentioned it in the listing and then when they gave us a tour of the house when we arrived they mentioned it a third time <laughs> so, so but it was like adorable but it felt like you have a gorgeous house like right. you don't need to it felt in that case it felt a little gimmicky and in this case it just sort of feels like maybe you use this pic picture space for something else so here's the other, so here's another little vignette and you say Bluetooth speaker, got keys, put them in the bowl, which is great. I love having little tiny baskets and bowls for people to put their wallet and their keys and their whatever, whatever. Um, although with this photo in the photo before it, where is this? These are like shelves attached to a wall and I don't know where they are in the space. Um, and again, like their little vignettes that you're kind of like, we don't really need, it's, it's okay. Like, it's good that you have this, but people are going to see this when they get there. The other thing about a Bluetooth speaker that doesn't have a plug, I mean, it has a plug to charge it, but it doesn't have a plug to like, I don't think it has, it's a portable Bluetooth speaker. I found you need to have the ones that like plug into the wall 
because the, the, it won't charge. Like someone's going to use it. It's going to die. And then the next people that come will be like, this isn't charged and I wanted to use it. So we have Bluetooth speakers in all our rentals and we just got all of them from Ikea. I got them from somewhere else before, but we got nicer ones at Ikea and um, they all plug in. So they're just like, they're here, they plug in. There's no battery for charging because renters are not going to know how to charge it or know when to charge it. The other thing too about ones that don't plug in, people will walk away with it. Now, by accident, because, you know, the boyfriend will be like, oh, I thought this was ours. Like, I thought we, I thought we brought the, you have the same one at home, blah, blah, blah. One time. Blame it on the boyfriend. Or whatever. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody who's just doesn't, whatever. But like. Someone walked away with ours that's literally this big that plugged in because they were like, oh, we thought we brought it with us. They mailed it back. Like they weren't stealing it or anything, but right. even like the big one that plugs in that doesn't have a battery, they're like, with like my labels on it telling you how to use it, they were like, oh, we thought that was ours. <laughs> so a Bluetooth speaker like this, someone's going to walk away with it by accident. Um, so I would say buy one at Ikea or buy one online that's like a little plug-in one, you know? Okay, this is your house, which is amazing. Can we live there too? I know, like, so it's great that you have a picture of the house because you're like, this is basically what you're going to be seeing from the guest house, right? Yep. And in fact, that I think that picture with the two chairs and the table kind of hinted that the main house was right there but we yeah, need like more this, than a hint like yeah like that your house is like literally i'm drinking coffee and you guys could possibly be there and your dog is there which is exactly good you need to tell people that so they're like cool not you're never gonna see us you know so you say this is the view of the main house and billy dog from the guest house i would just uh, word that differently. It doesn't read that well. So maybe it's like, this is the view of the main house from the guest house. That's the sentence. And then right. you say something about the dog. Um, and we'll say this again, but we think that you should have like just a little hand-drawn map to show uh, both the guest house, the main house together. i bet since you just work with an architect you have a gorgeous map or plan um just take a picture of it with your cell phone and then the next picture is your parking space so the first time you sent us your listing you actually had a car parked there which i thought was good because then we got a sense of like how big a car could be that could be parked there because if someone has like a big like truck suv thingy they might think, oh God, I'm not going to fit there, but they will. I'm pretty sure this is a big enough space. It's awesome that you have off-street parking and that you thought of that too. So again, like, where is this? It says it's right. the backside of the guest house, but, and there's some kind of alley situation. It's just hard to tell from the pictures and the description. So it's always helpful to just have a little hand-drawn map or something, or, or, or a, a couple different pictures that show the land in its entirety and like the parking alley in its entirety yeah that helps it just helps because and when i'm traveling somewhere i'm kind of like i just want it mapped out in my head so you know the stress of traveling the stress of like you know going away and leaving home and packing my stuff even though this could be like a romantic getaway or a vacation or whatever you know you just want it in your mind so that you're like I'm prepared. I know where the alleyway is. I know how to get into the parking space and then we're all set and then we'll say, say hi to our hosts and it's all good. With this, it feels disjointed where you're like, where is that? That's behind it. But where's the street? Oh, there's an alleyway. You know, even if you did look, I've done this before where I will do a, you know, a satellite view of Google maps. You don't have to be like, this is our exact location, but like, you know, you can Photoshop out some things, but you're like, here's the back, although it might not be updated to show your house since it's not a brand new house, but eventually you could just be like, you can drive here, back here, and this is the front, and this is how you access it. Just 
give people a little bit of info so that they're not like, where am I going? What am I doing? We love your house. I love your house so much. I think it's beautiful. And I love the gray black brick. It's absolutely gorgeous. So this is the front as seen from the sidewalk. So again, like we have a hint of the guest house in the back, but you could also say that like you can, you know, see the fence of the guest house in the back or something, you know, just to like continue to orient people towards your property. And to make it very clear. I mean, you say this is the front of the main house, right? People who are renting that back guest house are not staying in this house. Like you do not want people to be like trying to walk into your house because they're like, oh, I thought we were like staying in this big house, which would be ridiculous, but you never know, you know? I mean, I love this property so much. I would stay here in a heartbeat. I feel like, you know, there are many more details to come, I have a feeling. And we heard that there is potentially another guest space on your property in a finished basement. So that's really exciting. We can't wait to hear about that. Um, but I would say more, actually more photos, more photos with more information and how, how to like warm up your space. Yeah, I agree. I think you have an amazing space. I'm glad that you told us in your email that instead of making like a two car garage in the back, you were like, let's build a guest house and basically I'm assuming pay for our mortgage, which is so smart. And I love that so much. And you're wanting to show off your neighborhood and you're wanting people to come to your city and you're wanting to revitalize things in your area. And this is an amazing way to do that. And I think you're getting an amazing start. And like Ashley said, I, I'm so psyched to hear more about your other Airbnb listing that's going to be happening. So that's great. Thank you for sending us your listing. Also, just a shout out to communities and cities who allow this kind of development. I think um, what Tony was saying in his email to us was, uh, you know, multifamilies are at a crazy premium in his area. And in order for them to have a multifamily property, they basically had to build it. Right. And so, but again, they had to have a, a community that was willing to have properties like this developed. So it's amazing. I wish my community let us have things like this. And it's just, it can be a real struggle to build something like this. So it sounds like a really progressive um, planning community. So that's it for this episode. We're so excited to see your properties. So definitely send us your listings at shampooandbooze at gmail.com and let us know that you're okay with us sharing your property details and your name and your info. And don't forget to leave comments on YouTube. Um, I would love to hear from other people what people think about other people's spaces, advice people have on the listings. Um, let's have a conversation. Bye. Bye.